Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and I just got done watching Batum, Episode 1. And I have to say, this was an action-packed opener. I absolutely loved it. I was on the edge of my seat watching Awestruck from beginning to end, and it just looks fantastic. This is the way you want to start an anime series, as far as I'm concerned. Now, the entire story revolves around Ryota, who is one of the top ten players of this online war game called Batum. And essentially, it's to do with bombs. You know, there isn't guns and that kind of thing, no sharpshooting or, you know, first-person shooting, that kind of stuff. It's all to do with bombs, and I wonder if there's also a level of, you know, maybe hand-to-hand -hand combat to do with it, but mainly the bombs is the way to go, you know? And this guy just kicks ass at this game. He ends up getting to that top 10 position just as we're watching the beginning of this episode, and we see that, you know, in flashbacks and so forth, he's not having the greatest relationship with his mother. He, you know, basically needs to get a job, and he has his own ideas about what he wants to do, which conflicts with his mother, and he's very disrespectful to her, at least in the flashbacks. And I gotta wonder if he's actually remorseful about that or not, because as we see, you know, he basically goes to this store, he's approached by these two shadowy figures who know him by name, and the next thing he knows, he's hanging from a tree in the jungle on this island, not knowing how he got there. And of course, what's happened is he's been thrust into a real-life version of the very game he's been playing. He is unceremoniously welcomed by somebody who wants to kill him, who is out for blood and starts tossing bombs at him after he's eaten his little lunch that he realized he bought at the store where he was just shortly thereafter approached and swept off to this island. And it doesn't take him too long to figure out what's going on, because, of course, he's got to run for his life. And um, the thing that I found really really impressive with the character from the get-go is that he doesn't want to kill. When he realizes that's his only choice, he doesn't want to have to do it. He's adamant about not wanting to have to do it. And it's only as a last resort to save his own life that he finally does. And for his reward, he gets the enemy's bombs, you know, that kind of thing. And, of course, the animation is just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it goes from, you know, the very high-tech, holographic, and action-packed game setup, which is essentially very reminiscent to me of a 2D Metal Gear Solid, something I said back when I saw the initial preview, to this lush, just fauna all around this jungle area on this island. It looks absolutely epic. It's a perfect setting for this series, I think. And uh, the action sequences are very well animated and suspenseful. You know, all the explosions here and there and everywhere. And I suspect we're going to get a lot of that in this series. I'm not sure the length of it as yet, but I think it's interesting that, you know, Ryota finds out he's got this, like, crystal embedded in his hand, and that's essentially the sonar that was used used in the game version of this whole real-life event that's now unfolding for him. And of course, after the credits, toward the end of the episode, we are debuted to the female love interest of the series. So this has a lot of stuff going for it from the get-go, and I'm really, really impressed. And I don't know if I'm going to do episodic reviews as yet, because there's still a couple other series I want to check out. But I may do, you know, every five episodes, if not every single episode. And uh, yeah, this looks like it's going to be a kick-ass series. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of it if you've seen it and otherwise that's going to be pretty much it for me so i'll catch you later peace